The character of Spider-Man has been one of the most iconic superheroes across the world ever since their first appearance in 1962's Amazing Fantasy issue 15. From the first moment that the wall crawler made his way onto the pages of graphic novels, he's remained a beloved cornerstone of the entire superhero genre. There are no shortage of memorable Spider-Man stories, for better or for worse. Now, we've previously talked on this channel before about some of the more high-profile Spider-Man comics that were much maligned by readers at the time of their release, such as The Clone Saga and Sins Past. However, there's another comic that I often see associated alongside these two infamous stories, one that arguably did more damage to the history and the character of Peter Parker than anything that came before or after it. One more day. One More Day might just be the most controversial Spider-Man story ever told, and certainly one of the most polarizing moments in all of Marvel Comics history. And in this video, I want to break down the history of just how this story came to be, what the original plans were for this story, and the behind the scenes controversies that led to the version that we ultimately got, and how One More Day has served to massively impact the legacy of the amazing Spider-Man character and the entire Marvel Marvel Universe as a whole. Before we continue though, just a quick reminder to leave a like on this video if you enjoy it, and subscribe to Owen Likes Comics so you don't miss out on any future videos. So, in order to explain the history and significance of One More Day and its impact on the Spider-Man mythos, I think it's first important to discuss the state of the character's books prior to its release, as well as the individuals responsible for bringing this story to life. One More Day was the final story arc in writer J. Michael Straczynski's six-year run on the Amazing Spider-Man comic series. Now, Straczynski took over the title in June of 2001, attempting to breathe new life into the character with the new millennium. Initially, his arc got off to a promising start, introducing many unique characters and concepts. However, Straczynski's fortunes began to change in 2004, following the release of the highly controversial storyline Sins Past. Running throughout Amazing Spider-Man issues 509 to 514, this story not only saw the reveal of Gwen Stacy's affair with Norman Osborn, but also notable clashes between the writer and Marvel editorial, who vetoed much of Straczynski's original plans for the story and mandated the version that was ultimately released. Not only did Sin's Past prove to be a massively polarizing storyline after its release, it also signposted the beginning of further tensions between the writer and the higher-ups at Marvel Comics, tensions that would ultimately culminate with one more day. Now, although Straczynski served as the writer for One More Day, the real architect behind it was actually Marvel's editor-in-chief, Joe Quesada. You see, Quesada had for many years advocated for the marriage of Peter Parker and Mary Jane to be erased from continuity, believing that having Peter be married made him appear severely older to readers. Despite the fact that the pair's marriage had been positively received by fans when it happened in 1987's Amazing Spider-Man Annual Issue 21, and had remained a welcomed part of the status quo for years afterwards, Quesada was insistent that in order for Spider-Man to appeal to young readers once again, the character had to be written as being young and single. Discussing this in an interview, Quesada stated that It's really easy to unmarry a character or fix something like that. You just do a huge universal retcon and say a few things in history didn't happen. But that's really not the way we do it here at Marvel. Despite these hesitations, the notion of telling a story that retcon Peter's marriage always persisted in Casada's mind. As early as 2005, the editor pitched the idea to the various Spider-Man writers at Marvel's creative summits. However, the perfect storm for this type of story actually came the following year, in the pages of Mark Miller and Steve McNiven's iconic crossover event, Civil War. Civil War is a comic book that arguably needs no introductions, told throughout seven issues that span from July of 2006 to January of 2007, it's a story that sent shockwaves throughout every corner of the Marvel Universe, 
However, as significant as many of the changes made in this story were, none were more high profile at the time than the events of issue two. You see, as Iron Man and Captain America fall into dispute over the Superhuman Registration Act, both heroes attempt to enlist other crime fighters to join their cause, with Tony eventually approaching Peter Parker, building him a new Iron Spider suit, and convincing him to endorse the Registration Act publicly, with Peter calling a press conference as Spider-Man soon after, where he publicly unmasks to the world and declares his intentions to sign the Registration Act. However, after Spider-Man discovers that the heroes who refused to sign the act were being captured and detained in a secret interdimensional prison, Peter switches sides and aligns with Captain America and his anti-registration forces, leading to the epic climax of Civil War, which sees Cap surrender after a brutal battle throughout New York City. Following the conclusion of Civil War, Peter would go underground and continue Cap's fight against the Superhuman Registration Act, redonning his black costume and hiding from the many villains now hunting him down due to his identity being made public. These dire circumstances for the friendly neighborhood hero seem like the perfect backdrop for Cassada's ambitious story to be told. And as such, he pitched the idea to J. Michael Straczynski, selling it as the perfect end to his time on the Amazing Spider-Man series before he departed the following year. Straczynski agreed to work on the project, serving as writer while Quesada would draw it, before Marvel began to cryptically announce it in early 2007. With speculation rife and anticipation high, readers anxiously picked up Amazing Spider-Man issue 538, unsure of what to expect, only to be met with one somber question, what would you do with one more day? Amazing Spider-Man issue 538 serves as the bridge between Civil War and One More Day, with the comic featuring flashbacks to what happened after the Titanic battle between the Marvel heroes. We learn that as Peter battles alongside Captain America, Mary Jane and Aunt May are anxiously waiting at home for him to return. The closing pages see a batten and beaten Peter Parker stumble through the front door, only for a mysterious sniper to strike and attempt to assassinate him. However, Peter's spider sense causes him to dodge, moving both himself and Mary Jane out of harm's way, only for the pair to look up in horror and discover that Aunt May has been shot. From here, the story continues in Amazing Spider-Man issue 544, where we discover Aunt May in hospital, with Peter and MJ unsure as to whether or not she'll survive. Distraught, Spider-Man visits the home of Tony Stark, seeking financial help to pay for Aunt May's medical bills. The pair ultimately fight, with Iron Man expressing sympathy for his aunt's condition, but he tells him he's unable to financially support him due to Peter being a fugitive. Bitter and resentful, Peter leaves and returns to the hospital, where he discovers that Tony had a change of heart and sent Jarvis to write a check to Aunt May in his own name. Despite this gesture with May's hospital bills now being covered, Peter can't escape from the harsh reality that Aunt May might not survive this, and as such, he begins to desperately seek out help from Doctor Strange, Reed Richards, and even Otto Octavius, only to be told from each of them that there's nothing that they can do. Peter returns to the hospital dejected, only to be met by a strange young girl, who tells him that she holds the answers to his problems. Reluctantly following her, Peter finds himself standing before a mysterious woman in red, who shockingly transforms into the demon Mephisto. Mephisto tells Peter that only he is capable of saving Aunt May's life but warns him that a sacrifice must be made in order for it to happen. Mephisto then names his demands in the form of Peter's marriage to Mary Jane. He gives both Peter and MJ until midnight to make their decision, with the pair forced to make an impossible choice. Eventually, both Peter and MJ choose to reluctantly agree to his demands, though with the caveat that in addition to Aunt May's safety, Mephisto will also erase the world's knowledge of Peter's secret identity. 
Mephisto then appears in front of them and agrees to this additional demand, watching the pair say goodbye as the demon reveals that the young girl Peter saw earlier was actually the child that they would now never have. The world fades to black and when it returns we find Peter Parker in bed, alone. He walks downstairs to find Aunt May alive and well, cooking breakfast in the kitchen. Peter greets her with no memory of what came before, before he leaves and travels to an undisclosed penthouse, where he goes upstairs and meets his friends at a party. Chatting with Flash Thompson, we learn that Peter and Mary Jane are still on bad terms for reasons we're not currently aware of, before both of their attention is caught by the return of Harry Osborne, who shares a drink with his former friends as they all toast to a brand new day. I don't think it's a surprise for me to say that upon its release, One More Day was a massively controversial story. For many, the retconning of Peter and Mary Jane's marriage not only took away a core aspect of Spider-Man's status quo, one which had been firmly entrenched in the character since the late 1980s, but also much of the growth and development that Peter had experienced during that time. However, while these complaints are not surprising, J. Michael Straczynski's outspoken displeasure towards the story's execution certainly was. Writing a detailed post on his blog, Straczynski discussed the creative differences that he and Casada had when bringing One More Day to life, and how ultimately, the final product wasn't the story that he intended to tell. According to Straczynski, In the current storyline, there's a lot that I don't agree with, and I made this very clear to everybody within shouting distance at Marvel, especially Joe. I'll be honest, there was a point where I made the decision and told Joe that I was going to take my name off the last two issues of the One More Day arc. Eventually, Joe talked me out of that decision because at the end of the day, I don't want to sabotage Joe or Marvel, and I have a lot of respect for both of those. As an executive producer as well as a writer, I've sometimes had to insist that my writers make changes that they did not want to make, often loudly so. They were sure I was wrong. Mostly I was right. Sometimes I was wrong. But whoever sits in the editor's chair, or the executive producer's chair, wears the pointy hat of authority. Although Straczynski was on board with the premise of retconning Peter and Mary Jane's marriage, much of these creative differences came in how it would be executed, as well as what the impact would be on the follow-up storyline, Brand New Day. In an interview with Comic Book Resources, Joe Casada discussed these creative differences that the pair had during the writing of One More Day, stating that, When the group of creators decided what One More Day was going to be, a huge train was set in motion. The brand new day creative teams and editors began to have their summits. When I was halfway through issue 3 of OMD, we received Joe's script for issue 4. After reading it, we, Axel, Tom, and myself, all quickly realized that we had a problem. The script we had just received was not the one we were expecting, and the events that were being set forth in that issue were going to conflict with the work that was already being done on Brand New Day. I thought that perhaps Joe had forgotten some of the stuff discussed at the summit meetings and the subsequent emails and discussions that followed, but that didn't seem to be the case. This was the story he wanted to tell. In his story, Mephisto was going to change continuity from as far back as issues 96 and 98 from 1971. In Joe's story, Peter drops the dime on Harry, and that helps him get into rehab right away. Consequently, MJ stays with Harry, and Gwen never dies and never has her affair with Norman, etc., etc., and in the end, Peter and MJ are never married. According to Casada, he ultimately had to choose between allowing Straczynski to tell the story he wanted as the final chapter in his six year run or mandate that the final issue of One More Day be completed in the way that had been agreed, in order for it not to interfere with the plans for the upcoming Spider-Man stories. And despite his displeasure, Straczynski did agree to bring Casada's version of events to life, resulting in the now infamous climax that has become so polarizing to readers. Despite the backlash though, 
Marvel persisted with this revamp of Spider-Man, with the follow-up storyline Brand New Day, seeing not only a new writer take over in Dan Slott, but a clear focus on brand new characters and concepts as well, seemingly to further distance themselves from One More Day and the status quo that they had left behind. The Brand New Day era of Spider-Man comics saw several notable changes, namely it established that Peter and Mary Jane did in fact date, but broke things off prior to their wedding, with neither of them remembering their life before the retcon. Additionally, both Aunt May and Harry Osborn are revealed to be alive, with the latter having originally been killed in 1993's Spectacular Spider-Man issue 200, as well as Peter embarking on a brand new profession, taking a job at Horizon Labs. And while I don't want to disparage any of the work done by the creators involved with Brand New Day or the subsequent stories that came in the years after, it's hard to overlook the feeling that the Spider-Man mythos took a significant step back with One More Day. While there were a number of exciting new additions to the status quo that came after it, readers suddenly found Peter Parker back where he was many years ago, with much of his journey and growth over two decades worth of stories now largely non-existent. Almost without interruption, fans have demanded for the return of Peter and MJ's marriage from the very moment it was erased from continuity, with stories such as the 2015 Secret Wars tie-in Renew Your Vows, detailing a world where the pair are not only happily married, but raising a daughter who begins to develop superpowers. The fact that still, almost 15 years after its release, One More Day remains an intensely controversial storyline amongst Marvel fans, demonstrates just how significant significant and impactful a story it was, for better or for worse. And regardless of your personal opinion on the retcon or the way in which it was handled, I genuinely think it's difficult to argue that One More Day isn't one of the most notable moments in the entire history of the Spider-Man character. And given its polarizing legacy and the fact that it still impacts the way the character's comic book stories are told today, I think it's clear to say that we'll still be discussing One More Day for many more days and years to come. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave a like on the video and leave a comment down below as well. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about in today's video. I can't wait to hear what you have to say as always. If you're new to Owen Likes Comics, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notify bell so you stay up to date with all of the new videos I release on the channel. And if you want some more videos, there should be some on screen right now that you might also enjoy. If you want to support the channel and help me make more videos, you can do so at patreon.com slash owenlikescomics. And if you want some more of me, you can follow me on Twitter, just at owenlikescomics. But thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next time. So until then, take care and keep reading.